I like to mostly use the shoulder holster because it's the easiest way to just bring the pistol with me everywhere. <clears throat> I don't like using it in inside the waistband or duty holster when I drive because it's not comfortable and it's also more difficult and time consuming to draw. The buckle and clip and stuff is right over my right side when I drive sitting on the left in American vehicles because my inside the waistband is right about four and a little bit before four and a half clock position. Also, having the pistol there with the bits of the car pushing in, it'll mess with your spine and your ribs. So it's not just comfort, it's for my own health that I really just like to have this on in preference. If I'm going to be in a car or going out doing stuff. None of the problems have ever given me anything a little yoga couldn't fix, but if one wants to live the life of a trucker carrying an inside the waistband holster, I highly advise you consider a shoulder holster instead. Galco Jackass Shoulder Holster is my third holster. I've been wearing this almost all day, almost every day, for just over two years. It comes off when I shower, sleep, or need to go to an inside the waistband holster for concealment. It gets a lot more use these days than my Galco King Tuck, which I did a review of in a previous video. <laughs> Now, I selected this jackass over the other Galco models for several reasons. One, I like the downward orientation of the magazines in the pouch. I liked the cant of the pistol underneath the shoulder for comfort and retention, which can be further modified by the adjustableness of these straps. And I liked how in to the body the pistol was kept. It's not hanging out here like this, like a mono metal man boob waiting to bonk on things or basically being presented to people who want to try and take it away from you. The Galco keeps things very in, sleek, where I can keep a hold of them if I want to and they don't get in the way in daily life. I like the style of these pouches. Very spiderweb and minimalist style saving material which saves on cost. And if it does just as good and costs less, I'm happy to save the money. Now, as I'm gonna show you, I customized my jackass rig, and that's very rare of me. I'm pretty reluctant to just start hacking away at my gear. That's a good way to ruin good stuff. But I did notice that these flaps and straps at the back, once I was done sizing it for myself, tended to be kind of a bother and get in the way. And in Galco's own video, they said you could eventually just cut the straps. I noticed that the Galco representative seemed fairly reluctant to go to that option, and I was too. So I decided that I could use the straps instead, as I'll show you. What I basically did is I just got another bag of screws, washers, pretty sure that the holster came with spare ones anyways. And I just drilled little holes up here at the top. And then another one up here and put an extra bolt and washer through to continue to hold the straps in place. That way they wouldn't flop around. And then I'd have another layer here for padding. If one layer of leather is protection, then two layers with the little bits of metal running down it are even better. In the words of Cold Steel CEO Lynn Thompson, it's better than skin. But I pretty much just did this on my own with my Leatherman in the course of one night. Kind of proud of how it turned out. I'm not really much of a craftsman. I know it probably looks pretty mediocre to some of you out there. I didn't feel a need to clip these two in with another bolt because if something ain't broke, don't fix it. They stay there and don't get in the way really. I do wish that they straps could just attach back into this metal piece, this plastic piece in the middle somehow, and then I wouldn't have to do any custom work. I think that would be a big improvement. As for having these straps down like this, they definitely provided extra padding, having that extra layer there for where it runs over my collarbones. It really did take even more of the weight off of my form while wearing this holster. I definitely recommend customizing this as I have or some other similar method. Now, what I did immediately notice was this Galco it made my same pistol, the Glock 21, that I'd been carrying for years with the same ammunition 
feel lighter on my body than my second holster, the Crossman-ish, NSHO3, whatever it was. This definitely took some of the felt weight off. It also got rid of a lot of the remaining bobble and flop that was in the gear. You can see this stays pretty tight to me as I move around. It doesn't fly everywhere. There was an improvement in that regard as well. I like how far back the pistol and the magazines are kept by the pouches. When I hike in my configuration that you saw earlier, <clears throat> I find that the pistol and magazine don't get in the way of my AK, whether I'm holding it at the low ready or the high ready or at port arms or the underarm assault position or bringing it up into my shoulder or if I've got the stock underneath my arm for up slash workspace position. Whatever I want to do with my AK, holster doesn't get in the way of the martial gun handling motions and I really appreciate that. Nah, <clears throat> I'm a fairly skinny guy. I'm a bit over six feet tall and about 170 pounds. I cinch these down almost all of the way. I like my stuff to be tight and not bobble and flop, but you can definitely adjust this for whatever your particular anatomy is. It took me two weeks of experimentation, some hours to put into it, but once I had it where I wanted to, it stayed right where I wanted to. And I've done plenty of ninja shit in this Galco jackass rig and it's given me zero problems. I've done yoga in it and it works out even better than the Galco king tuck inside the waistband. This thing is just awesome. Now the Galco has the option of being run with these straps that you can order from the company. See them here. And what these do is they go around the belt right here like this and then they clip into the holster to hold it to your belt. Now some of you may have seen that a lot of holsters actually have connections that hang down from the pistol pouch and the magazine pouch. That's basically what these are, they're just sold separately. There's this little plastic bit here at the back of the pouch, you just rotate this down. You take your other leather clip, it too goes right around here, around the belt. And then we just put the circle bit through the button, clip it on, and ta-da. It's kind of like having a pair of suspenders or something. I don't mind it, it is comfortable. I just find it's a little bit more of a pain to go around my day like this. It does help with the draw and with getting mags in regard that because they're fixed in place, all of the energy that I put into the tool tends to go to the tool. There's a little bit of play in this one. I could tighten it one more to be comfortable for me. The one downside I notice is that when I go to draw normally, the pistol kind of wants to come forward here towards my hand and that really helps having the pistol come towards me. Having it strapped back here eliminates a little bit of that forward movement. Mostly though, it's just the pain of having these on all the time, which is why they're not really for me. On my previous holsters, I just cut them off because I found that they got in the way and didn't really help with much of anything. But I can see entirely why some people would really like these. If you're like a coveralls or a suspenders kind of person, these are probably for you. Now, speaking of the draw, that was the biggest advantage that my money bought when I upgraded to this holster and it was worth every penny. I had managed to pull off a couple draws under two seconds in all my years of practicing with the previous holster and with this one, but I was generally glad to be under two seconds, even from concealment. Trying to get under one second is still a lofty goal in my future. What I found though is the Galco shaved off, I'd say about 0.1 second off my ideal draw at my best speed. And what it really tended to do is it made mess ups and botches and bobbles less less often. It kept the negative things that can go wrong from happening so often, which also improved my average in a second way. I've done a few sub-second draws from this thing. Not very many though. I'm generally happy again being under two seconds, around a second and a half. 
at least I don't have, t that's my estimates of my time. I don't have a shot timer, but I can look at a digital clock and count the seconds on it. If any of you out there want to time my draws, just know that my first three demonstrations, I'm going at about medium speed, trying not to make the gear look bad by messing up. Then when I come back for my final one, I'm really trying to push myself, go full speed as fast as I can, or at least go with some significant fastness to what I'm doing. Now the advantage of the Galco, another came from being custom fit for my exact pistol. My previous two holsters were generic ones, they were just designed for full size duty pistols. Having the pouch fitted specifically to the firearm helps because when the button pops, as you can see, it retains the pistol with the moldedness to the shape. That's not there quite so much in other designs. Also, this adjustable retention screw on the Galco really works. Just like everything else that's adjustable and customizable on this, once I got it where I wanted it, I never had to go back with it again. It did take a couple of weeks and several hours of futzing with it, but it was all worth it. One of the things that I really like that helped with the draw that was probably the biggest issue is this tab right here, this metal plate that goes on the flap that releases the button. That makes this tab stiff so that when I push in on it with my thumb, all the force goes right into the button to release it. And that is so much better. That was the biggest difference that I found. Most of the other holsters that I'd had, this was floppy and would actively wrap around right here. This keeps it right where your thumb can get at it easier. You tend not to miss it, especially when you're underneath a cover garment or something. You don't have to push it and wind it all the way. It hasn't been folded back this way or been wrapped around too much the other way. It's right here. One thing I would improve though, is it is just kind of a plain metal plate. I think it would look cool if it was decorated or engraved like some Wild West looking stuff or something Celtic, etc., etc. You can also see that even though this is a stiff flap, it won't get caught on my arm. I'm basically trying to disengage this and get my pistol to fall out right now and I can't really do it. I found no need to apply aftermarket products to this to keep it waterproof. I've hiked with it in the rain before. It does okay. If anyone knows anything that will waterproof this without messing with the leather in any way like a lot of other products do, I'm all ears. One of the things that I like about this magazine pouch is because of the spiderweb like design, I can look inside and I can see my rounds. I can see my round up here at the top to verify that this is a full mag. And with whatever ammo you decide to keep in the back pouch, you can actually feel through with your finger right here to get a tactile reminder of what ammo you're carrying. I keep my anti-bear bullets in this pouch, and so I swap out the hollow points that are normally kept loaded in the pistol when I go hiking. So it's nice to be able to tell, oh, have I put my anti-bear bullets in? Yep, well, I can feel what kind of ammo is there, so if I still have my bear bullets, I need to load them. And then when I'm done hiking, I can be like, oh, did I replace my hollow points in the pistol yet? And I can check, yep put the right ammo back in the pistol. It's just a nice kind of touch for convenience and ease of handling and carry. Now another thing I kind of like Again, the minimalist of this, that I don't mind the muzzle not being completely covered or even having side flaps or anything on it. I run a Glock. I don't think it needs to be babied or anything. It's fine out in the open. This isn't for doing a halo jump and living in the jungles for weeks at a time. I have actually come across accounts of people who were pretty professional gunmen, soldiers, fighter type people, who actually ran with this exact setup, the Galco Jackass, when they did a couple tours over in the sandbox. They just ran an M9 instead of a Glock 21, and they loved this Jackass rig, and I can see why. I think their context was a little bit more leaving HQ to go to where they were operating, not jumping out of planes at 50,000 feet or coming up out of the water like ninjas in the commercials, though. I love the buttons that are just on the magazine retention straps and the button itself. 
that's on the flap here. These things don't come undone when you don't want them to. I've never had a problem with these getting hung up and come undone, and I've had a very few incidents with this, all in the first six months, all of which were my fault. And it's because I'm generally carrying something right here at about chest level, boxes, groceries, odd shaped objects, and they tend to hit this thing and knock it open. Again, never really had the gun spill out onto the floor except one time, and that was 100% my fault. Most of the times when I've had this button pop, I've known exactly what happened, when it happened, and the pistol stayed put. Also, the way that these go, woohoo! <laughs> the retention is adjustable on the magazine pouch there too. As you can see, most of the time, the pouch will retain, ah, damn it, the rounds. The level of retention seems to be different on which one of these two pouches. They'll stay in there. They don't seem to want to stay in this one. Which is all right. It can be adjusted with these two buttons. I haven't put quite as much effort into adjusting the magazine retention pouch. Last time I tested it, it worked okay. What I do like is that the flaps actually stay down and out of the way while I'm reloading. Now you want to stick after everyone's going to bad mouth the holster now. And these are with my heavier bullets, my anti-bear ones. 13 of them in there, so they should be staying. Let's try the original mag that fell out that was loaded with the hollow points. Stays in there now. Not sure what happened. One other thing that I do tend to notice is that having this under here under my armpits, it doesn't really affect the set of my shoulders or anything that much, but when I have my armor under here, it definitely does push this out that I have a little bit of extra movement or puffing out in my shoulders and I have to adjust my posture, really make sure the gear is all set up. But in fairness, this is a Glock 21. This is the widest frame and widest slide that Glock makes. And I have fairly bulky level 3A plus armor. And with the way that I wear it, it tends to be double thick here on the midsection. If it was fitted armor, if I had slightly different anatomy, or if I used a smaller frame or type of pistol, I don't think that this would be as much of a problem as it is. It's just a blip on the radar, something I've noticed. You fidget a little bit, you're restored to comfort. Now, one of the best advantages of this holster is it looks frickin' awesome. As Paul Harrell said, a big part of wearing shoulder holsters is looking really cool. Big shout out to Paul. All your videos taught me a great deal, especially about ammunition. If you want to learn from a real expert about firearms, go check out his channel and subscribe. Final opinion of the Jackass is indeed, it looks really cool. Sweet leather, sweet shape. I really like the color that they chose for these pouches, this plum. I'm a big like flat dark earth, field dray, olive drab kind of green, this Russian kind of plum. The basic simple khaki-ish kind of pre-camo digi colors. That's what I like to have bits of get, kit and gear be if there's no other choice. Now the color on this Galco, I think it's just beautiful. And the only way to make this better, in my opinion, would be is if it was decorated, if there was like a fancy kind of version, if you could get it looking like the engraving from the Wild West or from the Middle Ages or something like that. People in most other previous cultures and times, they wouldn't leave leather just plain like this. That would seem kind of boring to them. They would rather just have fun with it, fancy it up, show their skill and quality. And most people in most times and eras want to look pretty spiffy. I normally don't care for decoration on weapons, things like that. It makes me think less of it to see skulls and gems and all this other stuff hanging on it. But for the shoulder holster, you're either not going to see it because it's going to be completely covered, or if you're showing it off, 
you're kind of showing it off. It's up there in their face. You may as well have the increased psychological effect. Because again, a big part of wearing shoulder holsters is looking really cool. In my opinion, the Galco Jackass has that in spades over any of the other shoulder holster type designs. So if this came maybe in different colors, if there were decoration options, I think that would make it a perfect design, especially if they improved this plastic bit on the back so that the flaps of these leather straps could simply go in there and be stayed. I think that would make this perfect. So come on, Galco, I know you can do it and keep it at the price pretty much where it's already at. And I would totally buy it because it'd be badass. All that being said, this is just my opinion and experience with the knowledge and skills that I have. I'm no hero, I'm no great warrior, I'm not even an expert. I'm just some guy. Peace.